Hi everybody, welcome to Matt Bayeski YouTube channel. Just get this right, how are you doing? Um, before I start, I'd like to just express my um, gratitude for all the people who've been saying some wonderful things about the background. This background is, uh, it's been like this for years, right? But the background, I don't really talk too much about it. These here uh, were from El Gato in Spain, which is basically a store that sold different things. They're not real, uh, both of them. They're just nice, big and colorful. They're, they're made to look like flowers, but they're not. So they're, they're easy to maintain, not much water necessary, just a lot of love and uh, touching up every now and again, just moving slightly here and there to give a different perspection, a perspective, I can't even speak these days, <laughs> just a different angle and, and just to make them different. So sometimes I'll sag and sometimes I'll lift them up. So I thought they were just a bit of fun. And actually it's nice having a bit of color in the background. Um, that lady there is uh, my mother, and that is um, somebody very close to me's grandmother, okay? So, uh, on this side here is a, a carving. A lot of people were interested about that carving. The carving itself was bought many, many years ago. I fell in love with it, and it's a carving from Indonesia. Uh, the wood, I believe, is... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's teak. Um, and these here are, as you can see, they're, um, they're called crocodile, that's called crocodile wood. Um, so it's made to look like ivory and of course if they were ivory I wouldn't have bought it. I am absolutely not. Um, so yeah, they're just wood. And it's a lovely carving and it's a great story to that, it's a really lovely story and as you can see all the way around uh, elephants so we've got one two three four five six seven the magical eight so it's always been in the background i love it it brings a lot of joy to me i don't know why but i've always had a, a fascination of elephants uh, of, of most animals really birds and i just love wildlife i love their spirit i love um the fact that elephants um I, i'm not so sure if you know this but Elephants have this psychic ability to know when they're going to die and many elephants go to the uh, uh, elephant graveyard uh, that they've never been to before, they've never been taken there, they just knew which way to go when they're about to move into the light and they go into this like huge canyon and um, uh, they, they just go to sleep. And uh, that was fascinating. This is, I, I watched this many, many years ago and, and elephants have great memories and, and this just saw something so beautiful about elephants. And when I went to Lek uh, in Chiang Rai, Lek is the woman who looks after elephants. She's the elephant lady in um, uh, Thailand. When I went there and, and uh, we walked around with a, a beautiful man who took us around and showed us about all the things that happened in in uh, their country and uh, the, the, the suffering that the elephants go through. Uh, yeah, it's just another, um, I guess, life can be cruel for all of us, you know. When I think about it, every animal, every species, life can be cruel for all of us. There's good and bad, there's light and dark, there's evil, there's good, and it's always there, it's always there in our life. And I, I've come to, the understanding of my years of working here as a healer in this room and an understanding by meditation, by channeling, by all the things that I've received, the downloads, that it's basically part of the journey. It isn't karma, it isn't bad luck, it's just part of the journey, whatever we go through. And there is no right and wrong, even though we would say in a, an earthly manner that is wrong, you know, but I think the only person who should say that is you. You should say, I did wrong. People shouldn't judge you for what you've done because, you know, um, was it Jesus who, who said, or somebody said it on his behalf, you know, um, cast the first stone, you know? He without sin cast the first stone. And that is really, really uh, relevant in, in a world of judgment and in a world of persecution and, and uh, nitpicking, bitterness, anger, jealousy. We, we really do hold a very, very dark kind of energy within us, all of us, and that can be released at any given moment. And a lot of people have to tame the, um, the, the anger within, the jealousy, the rage, the, you know, the, the, 
the, the sheer uh, mocking of other people all the time. It's almost like it's part of their DNA now. So whenever uh, something is presented, the mind of the, the hive, because it is a hive mind now. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't noticed, it's a hive mind. I mean, humanity, this species is a hive mind. Um, you can see it in every aspect and there's a very few people who don't follow that hive mind. And the sinister world that we live in, the, 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 the kind of James Bond villains of this world, the, the, the cultists, they, they know this and they influence more and more into the hive mind. If you can create a hive mind, you can control the world because they're a hive mind. So you just tell one and all the rest will follow. All the rest will um, self-police themselves. So that's what has happened now. Everybody's self-policing. It's a hive mind. Only a few who are, uh, are just standing back saying this narrative is madness. This is crazy. Surely, look at the facts. Look at the evidence. Not interested. Hive mind. And um, I, I remember many a times I saw the energetic frequency around people who are angry and that frequency can touch to, to somebody else and that will spark their energetic frequency in the same so then I came up with this idea that um, anger is infectious and it's just a word but it's actually true you can you can create anger much quicker than happiness in a room that's the truth I was a healer and it took me a long time to bring happiness into a room and I don't mean just with anger, I mean with fear. Fear is, a, is, is the, the most powerful controller of the hive mentality of this human species. Uh, I'll give you a for instance, actually. Forget that, just think about this. And be honest. When you're driving in a car, whether it's on a motorway or on a main road, and you're just driving, if a car overtakes you, do you kind of follow and go with them? Do you go with cars on a motorway? Do you do you congest with cars and follow the herd? It's the same thing. I don't go anywhere near other cars. They let them overtake me, I still go at my own pace. I don't go next to a car and follow them uh, and go with them because it feels like it, that's hive mentality. I go on my own pace and I choose to be separate from all the other six or seven cars who are, who are stuck together doing their own thing and racing and being egoistic and doing all this. Great. I just no no time for that. No time for that because I'm not in the hive mentality. I'm not in the anger, which is infectious energy, which then makes everybody angry in cars and then they all fight each other and, and then they all uh, chase each other and an ego of, of going behind somebody very close. All of that is a hive mentality. I, I have no time for it. I don't get involved in that. Just like I don't get involved with people fighting on the streets. Just like I don't get involved with people arguing about what you should stick in your arm or not. I don't get involved. I, I, if I see any kind of anger, any kind of sadness or depression, I turn away and I'm off. Not because I, 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 I don't want to help somebody. It's just that I know deep down that they have to deal with their own stuff. And you, you look at me and probably judge me now and say, but you're a healer, Mark. How could you just walk away from somebody depressed? Listen, a healer isn't what you think. Most people think a healer can go and touch somebody and make them feel better. It doesn't work like that. A healer is ready for somebody who is ready. So I am sat here waiting for a client. They come, they're ready. They've, they've made the effort, they've come. If somebody pushes them in here, I'll just say, don't even waste your time because they're not ready. Why have you pushed them in here? It's not gonna work. You're only ready when you're ready. So if somebody was to come up to me and, and ask for help, that's different. But if I see somebody in a depressive state, then that's their, that's their conversation. That's their energy. There's nothing I can do to help that. You know, you might say, oh, you can help maybe for a little bit, but not really. When somebody's really ready, they will find you because they will, be, they will feel that energy and say, oh my God, I need help. Spirit listens and then guides them to where they need to be. So I learned as a healer to look up and say, like most healers would say, why am I quiet? I mustn't be very good. I'd look up and say, thank you for the time that I can now work on myself. And when somebody's ready, I'm, I'm here. If you believe I'm ready to help that person, I will be the conduit. I will be the bridge that will help them. I will, I will be the energy that you will give to me to give to them so then they heal themselves. A healer doesn't heal anybody. <laughs>
<laughs> oh god, am I gonna get some judgmental, nasty messages now? Oh my god. <laughs> get ready for the the uh, inbox uh, bullies that don't want anybody to know what they're like. Um, if I was to show you some of the messages of so-called healers and spiritual people who send me the most evil messages, you would have no idea. You would be shocked. But that was one of the things I learned when I came into this field of work of spirituality. It is the furthest from spirituality. And I realized that people who claim to be spiritual are actually not spiritual at all because people who are spiritual don't need to say they are. And same with, I, I struggled so much with calling myself psychic. I actually hated it. I actually hated it. That's why I called the book Diary of an Accidental Psychic. I'm not psychic. I, it's just, it was just by chance. It was, it was effort made. It was just, you know, but to be, to be put into a box of, um, I'm not, just the other day, Mark down, down in Fuerte Girola says, oh, I know a healer. He, you know, you two need to get together. And I said, yeah. I know a, a window cleaner. I said, I know two window cleaners. I want to get them two together. Oh, I know two doctors. I want to get them two together. It doesn't work like that. Healers are, are individual people. They're not a cult. They're not, they're not, uh, um, they're, they're, they're individual. Healers are individual and people really struggle with that because they think that healers should be in this group that should be all connected as a tribe. Not at all. We're all individual and we all have our own unique way of working. So coming together with other healers, for me, it's nice uh, if we're coming together and we're doing healing work, but you know what? I, I, I'm busy, I'm busy. Yeah, but he's a healer, he wants to meet you. I, I'm busy, I'm, I, I've got a lot of work to do. Yes, I'm a healer, I'm a crystal healer. Yes, I do different kinds of work, but you know, ultimately, it's not what I do anymore. So, I, you know, a lot of people kind of want to sit and talk to me and it's like, it's just that I've got so much to do. And when people want to talk to me, they want to, they want to pull everything from me, you know? And it's like, I give as much as I can on here. In fact, you know, I don't understand why people want to meet me when, if you go to uh, this channel and, and watch one video a day, it'll take four years to actually watch all the videos. If you watch two videos a day, that's two years, right? To watch all the videos. And if you watch three, don't even go there. <laughs> don't. I couldn't even answer that. Yeah, yeah, fractions, chat, pie charts, all of those, uh, mathematics, forget it. <laughs> but yes, okay. Out, you thicko! <laughs> yes, uh, that's very kind of you. Very kind, sir. Very kind, miss. Very kind of you to call me thick today. What a beautiful, what a, what a teacher you are. Everybody, class, round of applause, round of applause. Get out, but just get. Out. I'm just leaving now. Yep, no problem. Thanks very much for that. <laughs> oh, did I have some laughs in school? Oh yeah, yes, I had some laughs. I wasn't a very controllable child. Um, Marissa, your son, we can't control him. <laughs> Good. You shouldn't be controlled. <laughs> I was going to talk about a crystal today. <laughs> where, where have I gone with all of this? Where, where are you going back? Come back. <laughs> talk about crystals. So this past three, four weeks, I've been um, channeling, I've been meditating, I've been doing a lot of deep work. And I'd like to express my uh, gratitude to one crystal that has been um, the catalyst of the download and the healing work that I've done in these past weeks. The download a lot of people saw live uh, I didn't realize apparently there was other 500 people, somebody said, when it happened. So basically I did a ritual uh, live for the first time, which went against all shamanic law and it worked. Um, I've had over 150, 200 maybe messages of people, uh, lives have changed from it. So I know it worked. Not so sure whether I'm gonna do another one because uh, that download was pretty heavy. But I needed that download to know where to go from here. From that moment on, I placed, for some reason, I got a, a, a crystal 
that I knew was going to help me through this period of the download to understand it. Now, you might think it's Moldavite, but actually this time it wasn't. I actually went for a crystal. I've got it around my neck, actually. I'm wearing it now. It doesn't look anything to wow, but it's from a, a magical mountain um, in America. And of course, the shamans of America probably used to go to this mountain and um, pray and connect. And it makes sense because when you wear it, it's pretty powerful stuff. It's actually, it's like an opal if you look at it. It's called Mount Shasta, but it, you can actually it, you can actually see there that looks very much like opal. Um, it's a divine, it's a divine energy. It's a divine rock uh, mineral. It's, it's incredible, in fact. I'm getting so um, excited about this crystal that I've been wearing uh, over there. I've worn seven thus far uh, of ones I'm putting on the website and they've all been extremely different, but extreme. I'll show you this one, which was really incredible. This one here, I got some great work out of this one. Some fascinating um, energetic work that I, I did. I, I'll talk about it one day, but beautiful, beautiful crystal, beautiful. So maybe I'll talk a little bit about Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta. Um, when I first heard, heard about it and I realized that I actually worked with some and it was in a, a, a sphere which was metal and looked like a, a, an orange shaped sphere of metal and inside there there were three crystals and one was Mount Shasta and when I talked about this crystal originally on this um, YouTube channel a friend contacted me and laughed and said Mark you were wearing one and I said when? She said, do you remember the crystal that I gave you, which was in, in the, um, the bunch of crystals? I said, yeah, one of them was Mount Shasta. I went, wow. And I'm recalling the healing sessions we did with it. Wow, makes sense, makes sense. Um, so I didn't realize I actually worked with it. I didn't know what it was. I actually thought it was a rock from somewhere else in Spain. But me being me, I don't listen uh, as I should do because I'm always in my own energy and working with energy and looking and, oh yeah, thanks for that. And then I'm back on with working with, with clients, with energetic frequencies and trying to figure out what's going on while a healing session's being done. So going back to um, the download, when I received that download, it was a lot of people saw me break down and um, that is very, very uh, normal in a, a ritual. Many uh, rituals that I've done, and I've done probably over 150 uh, in the 20 years, maybe more. But in those times, it was very, very frequent that people would break down. Literally, everything would come out. It would just pour out. And many people would say that that was years of, of trauma being released. And they don't, you didn't even know where it came from. Well, that's what happened to me. I was busy doing the work. It was it was going really well. I was really seeing children, adults, uh, 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 from trapped in between two worlds. And, and I was welcoming them into the circle. It was incredible frequency energy. And some people saw it, some people felt it. And um, obviously a lot of people were saying to me that they've never felt the same as they do now. And what they felt was an attachment is now gone. I've had hundreds of messages, at, at least 150 to 200, I'm sure of it. So it may have helped about 30 to 40% of the people watching, which is pretty phenomenal really. And um, it, yeah, I mean, you just need to look at the messages. Not everybody, but some people are ready. And, and sometimes it takes a while as well. I mean, sometimes you can do a healing session and, and nobody can feel anything. And then a week later, a month later, somebody will say, oh my God, Mark, I didn't realize, but things have changed. I look back now and realize it's gone. And a lot of the times as a healer, you see it, but you don't say anything because you know it's up to them to see it. But frequently as a healer, we find that people forget 
the pain and suffering that they went through and then everything's back to normal until the pain and suffering comes again and then they come back to you and then they might say, oh my God, I didn't realize, you know, you know how it is. You know what life takes you. You forget about things and you just get on with it. And I said, well, we don't do it for ego. We do it because we we know we're doing it for a reason. It's our job. It's just a job, right? It's not just, it's a job, Mark. Don't say just. It's a job. Everybody who has a job, it isn't just a job. No matter if you clean the streets and clean it with love, if you heal, if you're whatever you do with life, if you do it with a great intention, then it's not just. So don't say that word. Just as has really killed this world thus far. You know, it's just just for a week. It's just a mask. It's, it's just one injection. It's just this. Ah, uh, yeah. Shut up. It's not just. It's a big word. So don't use it correctly, Mark. So sorry. Back to Mount Shasta. Shasta. Um, my pronunciation is dreadful because I, I never studied the Queen's English. I wasn't very good at school. I spent most of my time laughing and giggling because my life was more fun than being serious and programmed. So I, it was a struggle for the teachers to program me. And plus the fact I never really truly believed most of the things that were said to me in schools. And now I look back and realize why because most of the things we were told was a lie. So imagine a teacher trying to teach you a lie when you're an empath and you feel things and you might have this intuition. You're like, that doesn't make sense. That This doesn't feel right. And they're trying to program you into something. But we know that history is only taught by, uh, history is only given, written by the winners. Well, the winners can say what they want, right? What about the losers? Why didn't the losers talk about it? Because their perception would have been a different one. Just like World War II, just like uh, Churchill, just like um, uh, Cleopatra, just like all, everything that you've been taught. It's all a lie. All of it. Sorry, but it's all a lie. <laughs> it is. The, the, truth, the truth is that what you've been taught is probably the furthest from the truth. And that, that really freaks people out. But you know what? It's the truth. It really is. I don't believe that we've been taught anything like the truth in every single aspect of our life. Whatever we're told, this is healthy. No, it's not. This, this will cure you. No, it won't. You know, you, you realize it's all a lie. Everything is a lie. And thus, you come back to yourself and you realize that the only thing that is real and genuine is your experience. Everything else is just other people's uh, manipulations, propaganda, lies, fascism, uh, bullying, enslavement, all of that. Whereas you go into your own world and you live your own earthly life and you just get on with your fellow brothers and sisters and help and give an experience, that's genuine. That's the only genuine thing there is, your experience. Now to somebody else, they'll say that's a lie. So for me, most people call me a liar because what I talk about is not their experience. So I can say to somebody, look, um, I can sit with them and say, uh, well, you're never going to heal because nothing is going to heal you if you are living in fear. And they're just going to say, I'm crazy. What the hell are you talking about? I go to the doctors and take a tablet and I'm better again. No, you're not. You're living in fear. If you've got fear inside you, you can't heal. Now, if they were to say, well, that's interesting. Explain why. I'll say, well, it's really easy. I've spent 20 years with clients lying down and the ones who came with fear you can't clear it. You can't clear anything inside their body because fear is a constant energy that is feeding any kind of trauma or block or illness or dis-ease in the body. So fear is constantly. So if somebody is living in a body of fear from the mind, then they can't heal. It's impossible to heal anything and anybody that lives in fear, in energetic frequency of fear. That's the truth. And, and people think I'm crazy. People say, you're just an idiot. And I'd say, well, why don't you come and work with me for seven weeks? Maybe work with me for three months or a year and then tell me I'm crazy. So people would call me crazy, but then would come and then spend four days healing and then they can see energetic frequency. And, and oh my God, Mark, yeah. And I said, before that, did you believe it? No, I would never have believed it. So what would you have said? Well, I would have said you were crazy. So therefore, when somebody's perception of you saying you're crazy is only their lack of understanding. But that's the only way they can feed their ego, right? So if somebody says, oh, you're crazy, you've gone too far, that's ego. That's ego within somebody. 
That's how it works. And it's not their fault. It's a mechanism for their ego because nobody wants to think they don't know something that you know most of the time. In, in truth, I've seen this, this humanity flaw that only two or three percent would be really in the energy of openness to receiving new information and saying, oh, that's interesting. But most are closed and say that's that's ridiculous because it makes it feeds their ego so they feel more empowered and more powerful instead of saying, oh, I didn't realize that. I could have, I, 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 might, I may have been wrong. I thought it was this, but actually you might be right. That's called lifting. That's called raising your frequency because it's always good to learn to be a teacher and to be a pupil is the balance of life. Then there's no ego. So when you're working on a client and that client is um, filled with suffering and pain, as a healer, our work is to get rid of the suffering and fear. And the only way you can do that is blast an energy that clears away the fear. Clear, you clear that fear away and then you open the doors of the mind, the body, to receiving energy of love and healing. Now, a lot of healers will say love is the most powerful energy there is. It is if you allow it, but if you are, if your conversation in your mind is, is fear, fear of the future, fear of illness, fear of disease, fear of virus, fear of, of, of a lack of money. If you are living in that fear, then you are creating that energetic frequency in every cell of your body, which means it's been hijacked. You've hijacked yourself by believing what outside makes you say that you are not good enough. Religion says that you're a sinner every day. You're always going to be a sinner. Um, uh, the, the government tells you that you're going to be sick and you're going to die tomorrow. Uh, so everything is an attack on you. So, you know, you can see how easily the world has been manipulated by these um, James Bond type um, uh, crazies, psychopaths, I call them. And they love it because they live earthly life of power. They live earthly life of health, of organic food. They sail their ships. They have their islands. They, they have freedom. They don't wear anything on their face. They don't put anything inside them. And yet they make sure that you do all of those things. And it's genius if you look at it. It's pure evil genius. If there's, if there's something so concentrated in this world, it's those who, who control all of that industry, whether it's the medical industry, whether it's a uh, food industry, whether it's um, uh, uh, the police industry, that's basically um, telling you what to do. The, you know, the government industry, that basically is a, a completely separate entity that you believe is there for your good, but actually they're there to control you. So it's incredible how this world works. And it works to put you into a place where you feel you're nobody. It wants you to feel uh, fear every day because if you feel fear then you're going to feed an industry of um, of uh, medical because if you're in fear then you're creating illness in your body by creating illness the first thing you do is run to a pharmaceutical industry and then feed from those pills that then will create more issues in your body so it's a win-win situation for them so they will constantly feed you every day msm fear breaking news Breaking news means breaking your spirit. If they can break your spirit, it means that they can be contaminated. It can then ooze a, a poison in your body that then will kill, you'll kill yourself. And most people kill themselves. Most people die much uh, earlier than they should because they've been hooked into a black screen that tells them that they should only live till they're 60, 65, 70, and that's it, your illness, your back pain, your this, your that. But if you imagine you change it all around, you clear all that darkness away and bring in a new light of love and say to everybody, you are amazing, you can heal yourself, you can fix yourself, you can just eat natural fruit and vegetables which are organic and free from pesticides which are basically contaminated uh, poisons that are going to give you and feed you cancer. If you, We're just going to give you everything natural from now and by eating natural, food will be thy medicine, medicine will be thy food. You are the most powerful entity in this world. You can heal everybody around you. You can make this world a better place. You'll change the world instantly. Within one generation, kids will be powerful and amazing and they will contribute to this world. But now kids, all they're doing is looking down in their black phones, feeling sick and wanting to kill themselves. They're depressed. They're, they're all 
really ill now. So you tell me that the world is run by love and, and, and compassion. You're saying that this world is run by people who care for us. Prove it. Show me. Take me out there and show me. Prove it. Well, we're all alive. Well, we were all going to be alive anyway. Oh no, we were all going to die. Who says? Look around. Do you see anybody dead? Oh, that's because they're looking after us. Well, I really can't say anything. I, I'm, I'm going to have to stop you right there because I really don't talk black screen brainwashed. Take care of yourself. I'm going to create my own life and be healthy, organic and live a long life in peace. And however long that life is, I'm going to live it with the most important thing in the world. I'm going to live it being free and happy and joyful and bring magic into my life and help my fellow brothers and sisters every single day of my life. That is my purpose of life and I love it. And if I can make one person feel better, then I feel better because you are my brother, you are my sister, you are my child, I am your child, I am you, we are all each other, just like animals. So Mount Shasta, Shasta, Mount Shasta has worked really well. It is an extremely powerful crystal. One thing, it, it clears, and, and it did uh, for me that night, it cleared a lot of grief because it brought forward a lot of grief of the future of what may happen in this world if we don't stop what's happening right now. So I put this on and for the next three or four or five days, I started working with it in this room and channeling and feeling frequencies that I haven't felt before. So it was an extremely important moment of my life. And it was a new, uh, it was a new moment. It was, a, it was a different feeling. And the Mount Shasta was working on a frequency of, when we say high vibration, what we mean is that we're attuning to things that we've never felt before. And just wearing it was giving me information that imagine if I had 5,000 things given to me at once. Within that 5,000 things, they're all there. What am I going to do with all of this? I put the Mount Shasta on and I was just pulling certain things towards me which were fitting together. And it was like, okay, that's fitted together now. We can let that go. Now this and this. So I was pulling all these cords which were all fitted together and then moved them away. So if you were, if you were to ask me, what do you think Mount Shasta is as a crystal? I think it's one of four or five crystals that is absolutely for the frequency of this 2022. That's my feeling. I think it's a perfect moment for this new frequency that is breaking down of the old and bringing in the new. Because what we're finding now is the world is not the same place. We are more and more becoming aware, the ones who are, are more intuitive, the ones who don't follow the hive mind, which is now evident as a hive mind with what everybody's putting inside them. That's a hive mind energy that was, that was created. We all know this. Um, and we can see it, we can feel it within the people who decided to do these things. And we can see there's something not right. This is like, it's almost like an occult of people of all coming together. It's again, it's an energetic frequency, which is very, very addictive. And it's, and they're all coming together. It's like, woof. That is like the same as anger. It's infectious. This has become, this is, this is uh, what's been put inside them is infectious to each other. So they are creating this hive mentality and it's, it's like there's nothing there anymore. It's like there's just no point. They just forget it. It's like, it's, it's all technology now. Technology has taken over. So the pure ones who are working very hard towards seeing, working, uh, growing, seeing what we can do, how we can uh, maneuver in this world of madness and chaos and insanity, um, this crystal is ultimately the crystal that I would recommend right now. I, I honestly would recommend it for meditation. I would recommend it for um, anything that you're like, what on earth is going on? Give it a try 
and work with it and meditate with it, you will find that whatever the energetic frequency of Mount Shasta is, it will be in your energetic frequency and will lift you. That's why shamans go there. That's why a lot of magic happens on that mountain and around that area. The frequency is incredible and people have, have spoke about it. I heard about this many years ago and many of the shamans that I work with talked about that energetic frequency. And there are many places around the world in that same frequency. So this crystal, this crystal carries that. It carries that frequency. So when you hold it and you work with it, you and when you wear it, you will feel yourself changing. You will feel a new awareness, a new ability to feel and to put the pieces together. You will receive information from the crystal because the crystal will heighten your energetic frequency to the very understanding of what we need to know. So everything like psychic healing all your abilities will grow your healing energy will grow any kind of fears worries will dispel because you will you'll put the pieces together and the crystal just melts away anything that is nonsense so energetic frequencies from out there that tries to entrap you and make you feel bad will disappear wherein this will will protect you in so many ways that you will feel better I've got to say, it's one of my favorite crystals right now. Um, I have been wearing a, oh, let me get this one. This too is an amazing crystal as well. It's doing some great work. And this is a Libyan desert glass. I've been great getting some great work with this. And also astral travel work is great. That means that I'm able to attune to that travel. Whereas before I was a, a bit like, did I, didn't I? This is great for that. It's, it's a heightened uh, energetic frequency <clears throat> that also raises to your understanding of a different energetic frequency. I could talk about this, but I don't know it that well. I've only worked with it a few months, but I'm really enjoying this crystal. But for now, this is a recommendation if you can uh, get a piece from your local store. I always recommend you go to your local store, okay? The reason why is because you know you're going to get predominantly, your chances are going to be much, much stronger when your local store is selling something because if it's not, then they're going to get a bad reputation. If you're buying it from a website, Epset, eBay, all of them companies, it's like they don't give a shit. They don't care. They sell you anything. Oh, I didn't know. We didn't know. Well, we thought it was genuine, you know? They don't care. They just start another website up or that, you know, where well, you're going to complain. Nobody really bothers. So, um, you know, it, it's important because there is like, like anything, people use different rocks and stones and call them anything they want. If they can, if they can try and sell them and get a better price. So just be careful. Just be careful. This crystal is unique. Um, it's unique in all shape and form. I like them like this because I don't know. I just I just love them natural, and I love to hold the natural energy from it. Um, other things, what this well, it's a it's a heightened of um, psychic abilities, so your awareness becomes very. I've already said this, I think. Okay, the other beautiful thing is it clears um, any kind of heavy energy from your body, any kind of doubt, worries, fears, anything that's upset you, your family's upset you, people upset you, wear it because it clears it away. It, your frequency grows and it just it, it eliminates the negativity so you feel stronger and happier. So crystals to work with this at the moment i like working with it uh, on its own but it works well with moldavite um tektite and herkimer diamond i've been wearing uh, them all together and it's been fantastic fantastic work but just wear it on its own and see what you get from it because it is quite incredible and meditate with it with the music that i'm playing which is free on matt bayeski uh, uh, youtube channel uh, this healing music with this works really well Give yourself 15 to 20 minutes and just see what happens. And after that, go with it. Because what happens is it opens you up to certain um, paths, doorways, and just go with it. Don't be frightened because sometimes you'll feel this 
overwhelming surge of it's like a, a vortex it normally comes from the third eye or the top of the crown chakra just work with it and that is kind of like a download so you might receive it i mean this is a crystal that will help you download for sure this is a crystal that will help you heal and help you become a great healer it will do many things um I guess on a, a note that I'd noticed with me, it pointed out a few things that I needed to clear in my body. When I first put it on, I realized that my uh, kidneys needed cleansing. So I started uh, intaking um, bicarbonate of soda every morning and then within four or five days, uh, it, was all, it was all clear and my back felt great and it was strong again. So it, it's a great indicator of your physical as well. It, it, it kind of is your doctor, it tells you what you should do and it gives you information as well. Um, I took some, uh, was it milk thistle? I took some milk thistle because I felt I needed some of that as well. So uh, I was taking For that, I'm just thinking, for them four days, I, I started off, I started off in the morning with, um, it was lemon juice to start with. So I started with lemon juice. I did that three times in a day. And like I said, within, within a spate of, I don't know, maybe a week, I was really, really strong and I felt physical. I think when you clear your liver kidneys, I'm telling you guys, your, your whole body is so powerful. It's, it's deep and, and like drinking fresh, natural. I mean, you can add water to it, but if you drink lemon juice, it, it really, it, it re-energize, it, re, it rebuilds your, your kidneys, your liver, it, it, you can feel it and you feel purified. You feel purified. Really amazing. So yeah, the crystal really works well. So I guess today's talk really is about Mount Shasta. So it's my pick of the day. I don't have that many. Maybe uh, I've got someone here that might be uploading shortly. Uh, maybe in a two or three days maybe. I wanna work on them a little bit longer. Um, and I know I've got some on my website, but I haven't checked if I've got, I mean, the first lot sold out straight away. They went like hotcakes and I got some great messages and feedback from it. But for me, uh, just wear it and um, sit in meditation, whether you're outside having a drink, just sit in meditation and hold it. And just, you'll see, it's incredible. Um, if you can be in nature, of course, that's going to be ultimately the best place to work with Mount Shasta for sure. If you're grounded in, on Mother Earth, on the grass, on soil, you'll feel a much stronger frequency that runs through the whole of your core. They call them the chakras. You'll feel that. They'll feel more aligned, more balanced. You'll feel generally um, positive and strong. You'll feel like balanced. And I think that's what we need right now. We need balancing because there's so much out there that's trying to unbalance us in so many ways. It's an attack on humanity. Let's face it, we're in a spiritual battle and things like um, very powerful crystals from very powerful uh, spiritual and magical places surely make sense right now. So I stick with that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with this crystal for the next few more days and um, hopefully I'm going to start writing a new book about the download and everything that I received because I think it's too good not to write about. So from my heart to yours, thank you once again for making mattbyeski.com your favourite place, your favourite home. Thank you for buying the teas, we're nearly sold out by the way. Um, Mugwort, the, um, the, the tea which sold out straight away. Uh, takes a long time, takes a long time because it has to be grown and God, if you understand how they prepare it and how they grow it, it's like, it's incredible. So we're hoping uh, February we might have our next batch. Uh, we don't know how much, but we're hoping that to buy as much as we can. And that is for uh, the para parasite cleanse. We still have um, the beautiful 
uh, tea with horse, horse uh, tail. Um, that is probably the best seller right now because everybody that has family who is suffering from the after effects of certain procedures are really benefiting from it, which I'm so, so thankful for. But still the number one seller on the website is the cleansing sticks. They really are blowing people away right now. It, it seems to have come to pass that the products on markbayeski.com uh, were made for this moment. I actually think they probably were. So thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate that. And um, let's continue this year by creating and making a massive difference. Um, that's it. Have a beautiful day. 45 minutes of uh, gobbledygook, as most people would say. But the 2% will say, got that, Mark. That was interesting. Cheers for that. <laughs> and I hope it has made a difference. I hope it's made you think a bit. So get yourself down to your local store and ask for a beautiful, genuine, genuine piece of Mount Shasta. It might just, just blow you away. Take care.